Harold, we've we've reached the point now uh, in the series "Loving Unconditionally," where you've shown us how to expand our awareness uh, as we look further within ourselves to see our greater potential, going beyond our thoughts and feelings, and uh, discovering that divine aspect of ourselves, uh, where we also find a flame of unconditional love, as you described it. Now. This is the point, I guess, where we start learning to live from the level of the unconditional love within us. And this, this uh, episode here will, will cover broadly uh, the chapter four of your book, Unconditional Love and Unlimited Way of Being. Uh, and you start this chapter with a, a paragraph, which I'll read. Uh, Touching the rich fabric of life thrills us as we fold ourselves delicately into the experience of creation. Letting go of every care and concern, we allow the great dimensions of love to envelop our consciousness. Forgiveness and self-responsibility become our focus. We heal the past and fill the present with joy and possibilities. The future is ours to explore and every step encourages us onward in an ever-evolving spiral within the heart of life itself. And I must say, I mean, this, this, sounds, this sounds really great, and I can't wait to, to hear what you've got to say about it. It also can sound quite challenging as well, because it, it suggests that uh, we're in for a period of change, and perhaps quite b- big change in, in, in our lives, uh, but nevertheless uh, something that's, that's going to be something to look forward to. So, uh, would you like to take us forward and give us some encouragement? <laughs> sure. The part of the process that we began unfolding in this series was to recognize unconditional love as a possibility. And the way we did that was to go within, to rec- begin to become aware of our thoughts and our feelings, be aware of the fact that, that unconditional love resides within, uh, self acceptance, uh, acceptance of our life. The world around us and, and really beginning to have a very different approach to life, different in perhaps the way we have been living it. And I say that because I know in my own life there was such a strong inertia to living in an outer world and reacting and acting through all the experiences of the outer. And I had little awareness of my inner potential and very little awareness of any at all of my ability to change my way of living through changing the thoughts and feelings that I had and the perspectives I had and actually embracing myself uh, instead of constantly criticizing myself and many of the other things that I was doing early on in life. I simply didn't know. I I had no no real uh, backdrop within which there were life skills being taught. You know, I, I was more one like most people on the planet where we are parts of families, parts of communities, parts of life streams. And, you know, for the most part, we generally speak and, and act accordingly to what we're brought up around. Mm-hmm. And very few, you know, find the inner inspiration to go within and actually begin to unfold our own inner potential just to see where that may lead. Mm-hmm. And I think it's this inertia that is probably the most challenging aspect to overcome because when we have spent, you know, the greater parts of our lives focused externally. Uh, you know, believing everything that we, we we're taught, everything that is suggested to us, believing every experience that we're having as being somehow outside of ourselves. And that, that this is where the, the shift kind of happens. We start to go within, we start to realize that all these experiences are coming from within ourselves. But in this process, in order to make this shift, to, to bring ourselves within, expand our awareness, become aware of the potentials, you know, of our imagination, our willpower, the very fact that we are engaging creation all the time, whether we're conscious of it or not, this moving within gives us the opportunity to recognize, wow, there's far more to life than we often are aware of. I certainly know that for myself is like, there was a a part of me, you know, always kind of quietly in the background while I was busy having a career, busy getting my education, you know, active doing all kinds of things and, and trying to fit in socially or what I thought was the right way to fit in socially, uh, you know, there was this inner quiet voice that kept saying, there's more, there's got to be more. This can't possibly be where life intended me to, to experience, you know, these routines and habits that 
were more or less perpetual and never ending and didn't necessarily bring a tremendous amount of joy. They simply were more necessity or seemingly necessary in order to have those few moments of joy that you know could come up in between all of the routine and the habit. So this inner go, this going within and then this expansion of my awareness and realizing what I've, I've got ability to do that I didn't know that I had really began the process of what I like to say is practice, practice, practice. Now that I'm aware of it, what do I do with it? How do I align myself so that I can have more joy and fewer troubles and challenges and, and fewer things that seem to be constant obstacles that I'm always striving to overcome? How can I smooth out my pathway? How can I enjoy more of my life um, versus what I had been experiencing? So this is where we get into kind of the nitty gritty, into the, the aligning ourselves and necessarily the, the intention to live a life of joy is fraught with the unexpected non-joy. Because in fact, when we start to make changes, we start to shift our perspective. And, and really this, this particular conversation is a lot about taking self-responsibility. It's about recognizing that we are the power source, the, the, the center of creation begins with us for our world and that we have impact in everything we say and do in everything we think and everything we feel. So whereas prior to this, we could look externally and say, okay, life is just happening and I'm just happening along with it. This going within is recognizing that, oh, I am actually creating with this universal life force. Mm -hmm. I am becoming more conscious of my ability to create with this universal life force. And as we begin to accept the responsibility, we begin to pay attention more closely to essentially every thought and feeling we have and acknowledge and recognize, are these the types of thoughts and feelings we really want to have? Are they even ours? Because that's one of the biggest stumbling blocks we encounter is that so much of what we carry in our thoughts and feelings, in our memories, in our dreams and our hopes are really other people's thoughts and feelings that we've accepted and accumulated other people's ideas that we then want to copy or mimic or strive for. Very few people come from a very authentic space of creating from their pure imagination, from what is exactly right for them, with all their skills and attributes and all their potentials, that type of living is more closely what we're looking at. And certainly I was living, you know, the, the appropriate career, the appropriate education, I was doing everything right. And as I've mentioned so many times in our conversations, I wasn't necessarily happy. I didn't even know how to answer what happy was for me because I was simply vaguely aware that I wasn't happy by choosing to go within, expanding my awareness of myself, and then beginning to align myself with things that did bring me joy and did bring me greater sense of happiness. And again, this is, is you know, for many, this can sound very selfish, and it is quite the contrary, because it is a very selfless act to reconnect to ourselves, reconnect to our divine potential, really reconnect to all of our abilities in a way that serves a greater good. Because typically speaking, most of us are so busy doing things in the outer for all the wrong reasons, shall we say, or for, for reasons of acceptance and justification and, you know, fitting in and being part of something that we tend to really not come from our choices. We tend to follow duty and obligation. And not that any of these are particularly wrong. It's just that we get lost in whose duty and whose obligation. And, here we're talking about actually aligning to our inner wisdom and our love and love being universal is the one piece that then becomes a very selfless act because the more we love ourselves, the more we give love, the more we give love, the more we receive love, it, it spreads. So, and this is a very genuine, unconditional love. This journey does require then the self-responsibility and then the self-action and shall I say the self-correction. And this is probably where the greatest difficulty comes for most people because it's in the self-correction. It's in the changing our thoughts, changing our feelings, accepting ourselves, accepting others, living in the present moment, being on a pathway of joy, taking a moment to take a deep breath and really go within and say, okay, what is right for me? You know, what is right for, from my heart? These are pretty much contrary to the way we were brought up. These are pretty much not what we are taught. 
you know, everything is striving for an outer materialistic end point, and we're talking about something that doesn't necessarily have a material component, um, yet it affects all material experiences. And I think this aligning with ourselves is the part where to the speed and degree and intense or intention, intensity of our intention, shall we say, will determine, you know, how rapidly people can align with their inner wisdom and perhaps the amount of chaos that comes along with it. Because I like it to, to a simple example of, you know, if we're living in a particular house and we have it all set up a certain way, and then we decide we, we have the inner feeling, the intention to live somewhere else. Uh, and then we go through the motions where we have to go out and, you know, be drawn to wherever that next home would be. And say we find it in fairly short order, there is a time period where we have to disassemble the existing interior of a house, pack it all up, carry it over and move it to the new house, unpack it and reset it all up. And what we often find in this time period is tremendous chaos where there's security, serenity, and everything's in its right and proper place in the home that we've been living in for duration. This idea that we want to have a different type of experience in a different home in a different location requires that we have to clean up the existing space and then move it to the new place and then set it up in the new function and the new form. And what we often find is in this process of cleaning up, there are things that have become outdated and outmoded. They simply don't serve us anymore. But while they were occupying a place in our home, they made sense. And now when we go through this, this process of cleaning up and boxing up, we realize some things you know we don't feel connection to anymore. And as we go through and, and remove everything and then literally clean up the, the last remnants and sweepy clean up that last vestige of our home, we go through a transition period, somewhat like our aligning ourselves, and then we reappear in the new home and we begin to unbox and try to find vibrational space for everything. And what we often also realize in this process is that many of the things that fit so perfectly in our old home don't really fit in our new home. In fact, there are things that, that need to go away, even though we thought we already cleansed and purged a few items you know, in this process. Now we find that, that there are things that simply don't fit. This is kind of what we're doing in this aligning ourselves process, but we're working at a very causal level, at an energetic level, or the root source of our thoughts and our feelings. And we're saying, this is the way I looked at life. This is how I've been living my life. These are my habits, my routines, traditions, duties, obligations, whatever we want to call belief systems. And now we're beginning to become aware that we want to live differently, where we want to live more freely, more joyfully, more serenely, more abundantly, more from our heart, less from you know, our fears and doubts. And in this aligning process, this is where we get to look at all these ideas that we carry in our psyche, in our soul, in our beingness. And we say, is this still appropriate? Is this how I view life? Or is this how I've come to accept to view life? And in this process, we can begin to say, these things no longer serve us. These really don't uh, resonate to our heart's calling. And no matter what the outer appearances are, we have a right to resonate to our own heart's calling. We don't need to fit in culturally or spiritually or universally as a way to find our self-acceptance. That in fact, what we're really wanting to do is embrace our unique grandness, our, our, our own majestic self, our own creative potential. And in doing so, unfolding that, we can become something quite stunningly different. I can resonate with that particular piece myself because having been in the, the finance world, having a, a master's degree in business and spending you know, a decade of my life in the whole business arena while also getting all the higher education in that, what I ended up doing the next two decades afterwards was almost completely the opposite of living a quite free life of not having the routines and really consciously creating project by project of activity by activity as I unfolded my own understandings, my own potentials. And certainly prior to that unfolding, you know, I simply saw a routine and a habit and a pathway that was 
fairly well marked, fairly well routine, fairly well known, fairly well established. Um, and yet by going through this moving of my, my consciousness from unconscious to a more conscious awareness, I shifted quite dramatically in my outer experiences because the more I embraced myself, the more I embraced new fresh ideas, new potentials that I never ever would have conceived of. And certainly in this aligning process, there were many moments where I had struggled in a way with letting go of, but this is the way I know how to do it. This is the way I've always done it. This is the way it's done. This is the way everybody else does it to the, this is the way I choose to do it. This is the way I'm creating. This is the way I'm making it up. And the struggle came more from the holding on, the attachment to the past, the holding on to what everybody else says. And the joy came from letting go of all that and following my heart. So yes, extraordinarily challenging in ways that you don't expect, and yet unbelievably freeing in so far as bringing us in greater alignment to our true potential, which I would say most of us don't really live. Uh, and I think part of that is this inertia, this, this sense that change is challenging for so many people because they're essentially afraid of letting go of the past. They dwell so much in the past, they dwell so much in the way things were that they tend not to embrace wholeheartedly the potentials because they don't know that, that where that will take them. And, and certainly there's no judgment. I mean, every pathway will get people somewhere. It's just that in this series, we're talking about for those that really feel that inner calling, that inner nudge, that inner, I need to explore more of life. I need to know who I am in relationship to life. That's where we're going with this series of conversations in so far as how to make that happen. Mm. When you say living from the heart, I mean, what, 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 what's, the, what's the process really of, of that? I mean, can we, can we be sure of what, what we feel in, in our heart? I mean, do, you know, if we, if we say, mm, you know, I think I feel this or I think I feel that, uh, it might be a bit kind of, um, what shall I say, um, precipitate to, to act on every feeling that comes along. I mean, what's, what's, the, what's the process? Do we have to kind of go with that for a while until we decide, you know, I keep, I keep feeling this, it keeps coming back that I really do feel the need to do something or other. And you, you say you gave yourself the space to do that. You know, how, how, and that's, how really, do do that? that's really where we're going with this aligning is the aligning ourselves is us taking the time to give ourselves the space and time and the focus on aligning ourselves in order to move forward to really embrace and create differently than we have, we need to kind of, I would say, you know, now in hindsight, I would almost say relearn the basic fundamental life skills, but it's certainly we've probably not been taught fundamental life skills. So in a way it seems very new to find out that, oh yeah, our thoughts and our feelings actually are creating our physical reality. And that if I change those, I change my reality. Now, what do I choose to imagine? How do I choose to visualize my life? How do I choose to live in peace in a sense of grace and a sense of dignity that becomes the aligning ourselves process that can be as short or as long. I, I'm sure on many levels it is continuous. So there's not like a beginning date and an end date. Uh, but the aligning ourselves is really aligning ourselves into the new home, based on our metaphorical example, is that who do I choose to become? And that was such a fundamental different question than the way I'd been living, which was, I can't even say that, you know, but it, was I walking around and saying, who am I or who was I or who am I in relationship to the outer world? I don't think I really had a conscious association to anything. I, I projected, you know, what I thought blended in and fitted in with the family and friends culture around me. But it was really more of a projection of what I thought I needed to do in order to be accepted and to be validated and to be part of something. And oftentimes I, I did not honor myself because I did things based on what I thought I needed to do to fit in rather than really genuinely listening to my heart. When I started to make choices that were unequivocally my own, that were recognizing my responsibility and taking back my personal power and choosing to look at life according to the way I would want to see life, then there were certainly great moments of, you know, where does this go? How do I do this? 
which is my mind, which is what I've brought forth from the old house, and which is actually mine that is something new that I actually have to bring in brand new that I've not even conceived of because now there's a need for putting a form in this new space. There are certainly rough, rocky patches because one of the things that, that is necessary in the aligning ourselves process is the level of forgiveness. We need to forgive our past. We need to forgive our mistakes. We need to recognize, you know, even on a fundamental level, if we want to know what have we been thinking and feeling in our life, all we need to do is pay attention to the way we're experiencing life right now, all around us. Because those thoughts and feelings were put into motion and what we're experiencing is a result of the accumulated thoughts and feelings over the past period of our life. If we want to look at life differently and we want to experience something differently, we need to pay attention to what are we contemplating right now, this very moment in our thoughts and feelings. Because this is the place where our physical, our emotional, our mental, and our spiritual all come together. This is the place where we can choose differently. And if we become an observer and tune into our thoughts and our feelings of the moment, we're going to get a pretty clear indication of what's going to come next. Because if we're being inner, inwardly critical, if we're feeling you know, lack, if we're feeling anger, we're putting that energy out. And that energy will come back to us in its own way and time and form. But we will have that expression reflected back to us. And it's not something to be afraid of because we do have to honor where we are. I mean, there's so many times now that I look back, well, I did the best I knew how. And from where I was at that particular moment in my life, it's not surprising that, you know, I was processing doing, you know, trying to understand something and I didn't have all the wisdom that I had perhaps the next day. The funny thing about truth is it evolves, you know, our, our understandings evolve. The, this isn't, you know, static pinpoint. There's no one universal uh, understanding. It's really an evolution of consciousness, an expansion of consciousness, an aligning of consciousness when we choose to align with a more joyful, more genuine life. You know, that is a more conscious, self-responsible action where we recognize to embrace ourselves is to forgive ourselves. To forgive ourselves is to heal ourselves. When we do these things, we also simultaneously forgive and release those around us, and we heal those around us, those relationships we have with everything around us. Because we start to recognize the creative aspect in all of us, and when we start to see it in ourselves, we start to understand and become more compassionate with those around us. We start to recognize that they're doing the best they know how. And if they're you know, very tied into their belief systems and their traditions and their personalities and their projections and all the things that they're trying to do to fit in, once we start to see slightly broader, we start to realize, wow, I was like that. I understand that. And then I can have compassion. I don't need to change them because they too will get their own reasoning, their own understanding at the right moment. Just as I'm sure there have been many bright aware people that had looked at me upon my lifetime in various stages and said, wow, you know, so much potential, but where is it going? Mm -hmm. The difference is we're talking about a much more soulful divine potential. We're not talking about how much materialism can we accomplish? How much, how many goals can we succeed at? You know, what can we do to cross our own barriers? Because that's all viable opportunities, but most of them are not realistic because again, the framework of, of comparison is an external framework of comparison. And what we're talking about is a very fundamental internal non-comparison, a recognition, of an allowing, an unfolding. It's like the, the acorn becoming a mighty oak. You know, that acorn comes from a mighty oak, it eventually expands and becomes its own mighty oak to drop yet another acorn of another potential. And not only does that acorn become the seed of that mighty oak that we see, but that mighty oak has roots that go extraordinarily deep. It requires everything to happen in a grand simultaneity, a grand, you know, we would say coincidence, but natural rhythm of all of it coming together for the success. And there's a, there's a recognition that there's interconnectedness and interdependent aspects of everything to everything else. When you start to live from that standpoint, we become more integrated and holistic with our view on life. And forgiveness is that process that helps us to establish that integrated wholeness. Because so long as we are at odds with ourselves or with others, we blame others, we blame experiences, we, we're embarrassed by our own mistakes, we feel shame, we feel guilt, we feel doubt, we feel worry. You know, these things are all things that separate us from 
our universal connection, that universal flame of love, that is already there. So in order to do that, we need to forgive our past. We need to let go of these things that we hold on so dearly. And you know, we, we think we're doing ourselves right and everybody else. If we hold on to pain and suffering, that somehow that will keep us with this remembrance, will keep us from ever creating it again. You know, in other words, we hold on to things because we're trying to avoid recreating it. And at first glance, you'd say, well, that makes sense. That's logical. But the heart recognizes that whatever we have within us at this moment is what we're going to give out. If we have pain and suffering within us right now, and we have not forgiven it and released it, then we're going to have pain and suffering in all of our lives because we're keeping it alive right now. Mm -hmm. Letting go forgiving, releasing, true, genuine, because this is certainly not something we can't fool ourselves or escape it. This is something that we feel from the heart. When we genuinely feel forgiveness, when we genuinely release these old energies that, you know, we've accumulated from our past, you know, from those of others, you know, from just a variety of, of environmental circumstances, life circumstances, when we let go of that, we become free in this moment, and in this freedom, we create more freely. We're not bound by pain and suffering. We're now in a greater state of joy and compassion. If we have more joy and compassion right now, then we will move out into the world receiving and creating even more joy and compassion, and it has its own way of expanding. Mm -hmm. The difficulty is in letting go for most people. It is in letting go of this well-worn pathway, you know, it appears easier to hold on to the pain and suffering, the fear and doubt, the shame, than it is to let go because we are not really taught to embrace our grandness. We are not taught that we are grand. We're not taught that we're divine. We're not taught that we're creative beings. We're not taught, reminded, shown, reflected by those around us because we're all in it kind of together. So in a way, you know, these conversations, we're talking about pioneering a timeless truth, the restoration of who we are at a core deep level and for those that have the courage to go within that those that have the, the determination to align themselves through forgiveness through detachment through letting go through love then certainly perspective of their own pathways the unique circumstances will unfold for them you know yeah you don't notice I, I rarely talk about individual stories um, of my own so much you know even when we talk in these conversations because I recognize that everybody will have a unique setup. You know, they will have their unique series. And where we love to identify with one another, you know, this is really a journey of the self surrounded by many. There's all the help in the world, um, tremendous amount of support for this unfolding journey. And at the same time, it is uniquely individual. You know, this alignment is something that we can talk about forgiveness, we can talk about detachment, letting go, we can talk about allowing and embracing and accepting and expanding, and yet each person will have to take those steps for themselves in a way by themselves while being fully supported, of course. And again, to the degree of the, of the determination and to the degree of how rapidly someone wants to dive into this, uh, how genuinely they want to live in the present moment versus you know, using life, you know, this newfound awareness as a smorgasbord, you know, dabbling in a little bit of everything is really just another way to perpetuate uh, an external focus. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not that we want to latch on to any one way, any one tradition or any one belief system or any one ritual and embody it, you know, fully because that still can be a very external experience. We're talking about listening to our heart. And as you, you know, asked and stated, you know, how do we do this? How do we move from the mind to the heart? Well, that's the, the alignment process. That's the journey. Mm -hmm. We know, you know, and I can't really describe it much beyond we know because we know the difference. And that's the unfolding that, that is unique unto ourselves that we know when we know. <laughs> and, and words really escape us because it's like intuitive responses. You know, how would you say you knew, you know, we had an intuitive response to go do something and it worked out beautifully where does intuition come? It goes beyond the five senses. Mm -hmm. So we're moving out of the logic, we're moving out of the five senses, and we're moving into territory where we're becoming conscious, creative beings. And that unfolding is really, again, a part of that the journey of love. There's no destination, there's no end goal, there's no, I've reached it, it's an unfolding. And mm -hmm. that becomes the exciting part, that becomes the moving part, that becomes the the enjoyable part because we actually get to enjoy 
finding out just how unlimited we are as as universal beings. Mm. And actually, our, our previous series of self discovery, the seven doorways of self discovery, would be would be very good on that kind of journey, that process, wouldn't it? Absolutely, because that's really what we're doing. We're we're dis we're I say you know we're discovering our potential, but it, it really is now a rediscovery because the potential was always there. We simply layered it with mm -hmm. belief systems and limitations, uh, you know, outer constructs that that inhibit you know, our, our experience of life, and we're wanting to expand. It's not that any of these material things necessarily go away, it's that we enjoy them differently because, for, for example, material things, we don't own them, we don't own our houses, we don't own our buildings, we don't own our family, we don't own our children. We tend to construct it in a way in our, our cultures as if we own things, but let's face it, when we step away from, you know, our bodies and, and we no longer reside in this lifetime, we don't take anything with us. When we take off a spaceship and we're in this lifetime, we go away from the earth and we look back on it, we don't see borders, we don't see towns, we don't see walls holding back, you know, different cultures. It's all very universal. When we look at the earth in relationship to all the other planets and everything else in our galaxy, it's all universal. So we've only made this up in our minds. We've made up these borders, these boundaries, these separations, because we've separated ourselves from our natural spark of love. We've separated ourselves. And even that, again, as we move beyond it and become more aware, it's somewhat multidimensional. We really haven't separated ourselves ever. We just perceive or believe or think somehow we're separate. This aligning process, this expanding our awareness, this going within, this recognizing unconditional love, this is where we reconnect to that divine spark, to that natural essence of who we are. We are love. So what can we do to explore and find out how to express this love, how to generate this love? It's there. How do we generate it? Well, necessarily, when we've lived a life of very limited beliefs and very outwardly focused understandings, and quite honestly and, and often associated to that is a lot of limitation, a lot of lack, a lot of um, upheaval, a lot of challenge, a lot of doubt, a lot of you know unhappiness at a core level. When you start to find out that you're happy, you know, that's quite different. We, we realize that we can actually generate joy, we can actually express our love. That's quite different a way than we've been doing it. And when we're surrounded by people who are not necessarily doing it, we can appear quite peculiar to them because we're enjoying life when everyone else is suffering, as we had been doing just moments prior. So we're actually starting to live more genuinely and more joyfully and more serenely and that can be kind of a contrast that others don't always recognize or understand and that's part of the alignment process is to be okay with that to be okay with our own unfolding even if those around us aren't unfolding so it is quite quite the journey it's quite the experience it's quite the unfolding and it does take a, a, a tremendous amount of courage and strength to go within and really you know rhythmically, as I started out saying, practice, practice, practice. It really does come down to it. We, we keep doing it until we have greater and greater understanding of our relationship to ourselves. Mm -hmm. And, and as, we, as we align ourselves to, to, to the unconditional love within, uh, presumably the, the mind still has quite an active role in the way we live our lives. Uh, and and you, you feel that we, we can trust that the unconditional love will guide us in the most, in, in the best possible way in our lives. The mind is a wonderful tool. When we live in the mind, as you know, we often do when we're, we're unconscious of, of our greater beingness, the mind thinks, you know, everything we think, everything that's logical, everything we've believed, everything that everybody else does, everything we're, we're here to do, you know, it's quite com compartmentalized, quite logical, quite linear, quite um, you know, a, a nice, simple, easy path and way to live. You know, when you start to express from the heart, it becomes much more multidimensional. Life becomes more circular. Experiences become more integrated and holistic. Things become more interconnected and interdependent. You know, we begin to recognize a unity where before we reveled in, in, in a separation. Our uniqueness 
seems to be threatened in a way. Our personality, our ego seems to be threatened. The mind concept of ourselves, you know, at first seems to be threatened from the sense that it's identified itself with itself. When we move into the heart, we start to identify with something far grander, far larger, far more expansive, far more infant, far more oneness. And in those initial stages, they one, you know, we, we kind of say the bit of a battle that goes on between the two. Uh, and the battle is really not so much as we tend to think of it in battle terms. And it's not the mind over the heart. It's the heart's always been there. So the heart is the aspect and the mind is the, the, the tool that helps us, you know, function and perform in this world. It really becomes more about the attachment, attachment to beliefs, attachment to the past, attachment to, you know, as we stated, you know, things that are unforgiven or we may consider unforgivable. Uh, that's where the, the struggle comes is because it's some of the hug of wars, the heart says, let go. And the mind says, I have to hold on. Well, over time, as we become more comfortable with letting go, we become more comfortable with our heart to where we start to flow with the natural rhythm of life. And when we do that, we become more accustomed to our heart talking to us. And we become more accustomed to the fact that the mind helps us produce, it helps us get there. But the overwhelming sense is this, in this new home of conscious dwelling, we become more relaxed in ourselves and we become more aware of that little voice as the constant. We, we connect with that little voice that's the constant, that, that sense of this is the right thing, this is the joy. Um, I, for many, many years when I stepped on this path, and I still use it today, but certainly in the early years, I would make decisions because I would look. I would stop and if I had some decision to make about an experience or place to go or something of that nature, I would say to myself, you know, what are my options? And I would look at the most obvious options. And rather than just seeing one, I would see many. And out of those options, I would kind of play them out. If I did this, what would happen? If I did that, what might happen? If I did something else, what might happen? And out of those options, one would always tend to be brighter. And so early on, I developed in my vocabulary is it was bright for me to go do this. It didn't, it wasn't always logical, but it was bright to go do it. And I would often, you know, especially if it involved other people say, well, it's not bright to come over. It's not bright to go do this or something. Mm -hmm. And it seemed like an odd word to say, because people are not accustomed to say what's bright or not. You, know, you don't make decisions on what's bright. You make decisions on what's logical or, you know, what's the you know, obligation. This isn't, you know, makes no sense. And yet, lo and behold, as I started to follow the brighter pathway, the bright pathway for me, the struggles and the challenges lessened, the path smoothed out, and the same people would start to come back years later and say, you know, I've started noticing that, wow, you know, I didn't want to go do this because it just wasn't bright to go do it. It's like, well, that's an interesting term to use <laughs> because they start tuning into the fact that they're recognizing it's okay mm -hmm. to not do everything logical. In fact, there's more joy at times in the illogical, especially when we're truly connected. Well, how do I define that for you? How do I define that for anyone else? I can't. It's impossible. Because in the early stages, the mind is quite convincing. And I, I've long since learned everything I've ever written about, everything I've ever shared, everything I've ever given out to you know, the, the world around me. It can be proven or disproven according to the individual's take on it. So I've, I've long since let go of any need or, or perceived need that you know anything that I'm saying is of any value because people will get value out of it if they apply it to their own life and have their own experience and people won't if they don't so I'm not in the, the position or need to validate or justify I simply share from my own experience from my own understanding then people will have their own experience according to their own life path and you know these things are provable and unprovable and that's the beauty of it we can't prove electricity you know without certain instruments but we trust that it's there you know we we know that there's an animating force in our body or we do now as we're discovering because certainly i didn't pay any attention to an animating force in my body and yet there was a recognition on some level that i didn't have to make the decision for a trillion cells to do the next step in whatever they needed to do to interact with everything else that allowed me to have breath or to eat a bite or take a nap you know, these things we just become so accustomed to that we trust them until something goes wrong and then we get all frantic about, well, how did this happen? We're talking about getting aligned with all of it, getting aligned with our physicalness, you know, the very physical nature being and embracing our bodies for the wonderful vehicle that they are 
and all the wisdom and intelligence that it has and to recognize our emotions is the way for us to connect with the world and to feel deeply this love we go into our mind mind can be extraordinarily brilliant you know we can have you know genius opportunities of being able to take all this vast vast sensory information all these grand ideas that come from our imagination and actually bring it into physical form it's quite extraordinary and then we come into the spiritual essence of ourselves that brings it all together and then we hit the profound then we recognize the love that is always there the love that is always willing and wishing to be expressed mm -hmm. and we become a complete being you know we we sense less of our physical emotional and mental because it's all one beautiful consciousness and then we begin to express from a completely different uh, alignment now what stage on the process are we are we even intending a new home are we enjoying the security and safety of the one we have the way everything's been structured and we're just staying along are we intending a new home and beginning to look for something to dabble around and, and look for some potentials you know are we looking at for new to let go of belief systems and old ways and old traditions are we open to change you know if we are open to change are we on the process metaphorically of you know boxing up the old house and taking it over to the new house or you know are we in the new house are we unpacking I mean each each of these you know in a way stages somewhat linear stages um, you know kind of speak of the aligning ourselves process and we use that kind of as a metaphor but it is like where are we in our thoughts and our feelings are we attached to the past are we open to a, an unknown future are we excited about what life has to offer or are we you know doom and gloom and, and completely at odds with everything that seems to be going on around us do we feel we have the potential the strength and courage to actually make this a better world you know I think that's probably the biggest fundamental thing that I encountered early on and chose to embrace is that I felt somehow I could make a positive impact on the world and I allowed that intention to be kind of a guiding focus and that's where the expression of love and the you know giving out the understanding of love and being you know love in each moment to the very best of my ability that became my journey because it's one that resonated to me if someone else might have a grand scientific uh, approach that can bring about you know incredible achievement that will help all of humanity because they are aligning themselves to their their hearts desire to really use their brain at a genius level quite stunning opportunities you know there's no one right pathway it's that love is the universal weaving component of energy in all of them and for me the more we open up to our own hearts and our own divine imagination and our own wisdom the more we actually express ourselves from the very core nature of ourselves and the the more we enjoy our entire material experience along with our entire non-material experience that it's all one big conscious beautiful creation mm. and you're saying that loving unconditionally is the is the main channel or the main sort of modus operandi of, of how we express this this greater potential well whether a person would would necessarily embrace loving unconditionally or, or the whole nature of unconditional love the essence of that is acceptance the essence of that is embracing the essence of that is acknowledging that we are far greater than we perceive ourselves to be you know that love piece is something that is as much as we place labels on it and I've placed labels on it for the last two decades in a way to conceptualize it enough to ex describe it unconditional love itself experientially is indescribable there are no words for that sense of knowing that we're connected and we're one and that we're love you know that those are experiences that really it doesn't matter where we are in any stage of life or any status of life love is the universal peace each person will have their own unique experience to it and perhaps then their own definition and maybe that's why my definition of unconditional love as being an unlimited way of being is so broad because it encapsulates and embodies the unlimited aspect it's just being unlimited well what does that mean to each person you know for me love is very tangible it's something that I that I know and I, I know when love is flowing freely through me uh, it has a component to it uh, an essence in my physicalness and my mental and emotional awareness that it 
resonates with in each of those capacities, and yet I always know that it's so much more. So for me, you know, the idea of defining it into a, a static state is not the real experience that we're looking for. We just use these as guideposts. You know, these series are really guideposts to encourage people to undertake what they're already perceiving, desiring, intending, wanting to know more about themselves, wanting to, you know, be more detached from the past and be more open to potentials that they'd never conceived. You know, putting definitions, you know, we only use our, our vocabulary uh, enough in a way to say, okay, this is where we're going with our energy. And the more we use the vocabulary, the more we tend to limit the very experience. We want to kind of move beyond the limitations as much as possible. Unconditional love, to me, would be the universal energetic in it all, and yet, you know, each person will have a very unique way of looking at unconditional love, and that's what makes the diversity so grand, because we all will have a different take on it, and, and that kaleidoscope of all of it coming together makes it extraordinarily beautiful. And is, is our um, creativity a very fundamental aspect? To, to, to that and how we're going to live our lives. We have the creative ability to live in fear and doubt. We have the creative ability to live in love and joy. And they're all choices. And I think that's the perhaps one of the most stunning aspects of my awakening is that I actually had a choice to live differently. The, in the self-discovery series, we talk you know, specifically about choice as the beginning point to realize that I have a choice, that I am no longer just ruled by what everybody else says or what everybody else is doing or the way everything appears to me that I actually can be confined in chains so to speak and and still live in joy in my heart I have that capacity I can choose to accept things the way they are and embrace the joy within and embrace the knowing that I'm more than all this or I can believe the lack and limitation and all the outer conditions as being somehow at odds with me and I will live in that level of limitation. We can be unlimited if we choose to place our attention upon that. So that becomes the, the shifting point when we take back our own power, when we, we accept the responsibility that I have a choice to see life one way or another, or in many ways, that choice is mine. And that can never be taken away because that's the universal creative nature. Now that I'm aware that I have choice, where before I may have been creating my life based on what I thought I was supposed to do, now we've got this extraordinary opportunity to actually create by choice, what do I choose to create? And that question, of course, will bring its answer. Every problem has a solution. The fact that the solution exists before the problem. So there's a solution to what do we choose to create, what brings joy in our heart, and that will be unique unto us, and that will also be the, the grandest opportunity of unfolding because we get to unfold what that creative opportunity is for ourselves and to the degree we have the tenacity, the perseverance, the willingness to see where that takes us, then we will have different types of experiences. Mm -hmm. Prior to what I was doing, you know, living a life, I kind of knew a career path that was, you know, had some great potentials and, and certainly would have been fine by all measures of outer standards. And yet, Wholly unbeknownst to me, you know, two decades later, I have an international nonprofit and five books and numerous TV and interviews and countless friends around the world in countries I've, you know, barely even knew of geographically and now I actually have interactions with on a daily basis. It's so stunningly different as to be as if from another world in a way because I allowed myself to unfold a pathway that I simply did not know where it was going to take me. And here, Literally two decades later, each morning when I get up, I still look at life that way. I do not know where the day will specifically take me. And I'm open to new, fresh, brand new ideas coming in that I've never thought of a moment before. And then to explore whether or not I choose to create from that level. That is truly different way of living. Looking forward to who am I becoming versus constantly looking backwards to who I was. Who I was doesn't matter. Who I'm becoming really doesn't matter if you really understand the present moment of having the greatest joy right now, I can only speak from that space as that's what aligning myself has done. 
it keeps unfolding with greater and greater potential and greater and greater opportunity. So the, the practice, 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 the, the effort required, the effort undertaken has been wholly worth it for me, which is why I've chosen to do conversations like this to encourage people to unfold their own life journey unique unto themselves. Even if they seem to be the rebel, the outcast, or somewhat completely unrelated to those around them as a result of this unfolding, they will still find joy in being themselves because perhaps for the first time in their lives, they will understand what it is to be themselves. Mm -hmm. mm, okay, so aligning oneself with, with one's greater potential is a, is a conscious process and needs to be driven by quite a bit of desire to do it and, and the willingness to practice 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 and 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 in a way I, I can also say that that when you we well when I started to do this pathway it was so fundamentally different than the way I've been living that the desire is born from within it, it almost became something that I couldn't could not not do I had to do it because it was so far grander and rich and filled richly filled with potential, so completely different than the way I'd been living, that there was just such a tremendous desire to unfold, to, to find out more, because it's far more interesting. It's far more uh, expansive and far more natural. And maybe that's probably the best way to, to say it is, this is natural. Living a very routine, dull life is not natural. It's safe, it's simple, it's secure, seemingly. But it's not really natural because we are far too grand to be in, enclosed in such narrow, defined roles. It's actually quite difficult to have such magnificence in a tiny, tiny little living space that is based on routine. You know, it's when we start to open up and we start to go within. Interesting, going within is actually opening up. Mm -hmm. That's when life becomes truly interesting, and the exploration is almost a given because there's no end to what all we can find out about ourselves and the world around us and our connection to all that and it becomes you know quite magical quite universal quite um, encouraging you know so many things that come out of it as a result of where we're going with this newfound understanding that you, until you start to embark on it you can't really say what those experiences would be you know, because it unfolds its own way and it reveals aspects about ourselves that we just simply did not know we had. And that takes on a life of its own in a way. Mm -hmm. So where are we going uh, next with this then? Um, we're following broadly again the, your book, aren't we? So it's Tapping the Unlimited is the, uh, is the next uh, chapter. In, in somewhat of as a logical progression, tapping the unlimited is really taking this alignment and now we're kind of in our new house and we're going to really explore the depths of our potentials and really move beyond our own limitations. You know, things that say, you know, in my case, I never saw myself as a writer and yet here I've written five books. You know, had I simply stayed with the idea that I never saw myself as a writer, I thought I needed to go to 50 courses before, if I finally got enough, you know, material or, or, you know, courage or whatever it was that I thought I needed that I could start writing, you know, those days never come. You know, tapping in the unlimited is being present in the moment and taking on action with our potentials and just simply seeing where it takes us. So tapping in the unlimited is the expansion of now we've we've been aligning ourselves consciously now where do we go with that mm -hmm. unlimited potential and and in a way your question is creative being how do we become more of a creative being that's what we'll explore in the next one good all right look forward to that thank you harold pleasure mm -hmm.